So now we're going to talk about demographic information. Demographic information essentially is, uh, is data that, that are about race or ethnicity, gender, um, maybe income, education, your social economic status. It really describes those are all demographic pieces uh, to the puzzle. So and when, when do you choose to include demographic information in a study? Um, it's usually only if your research question and your objectives specifically state that you're interested in demographics. Um, you, you, know, you may not necessarily think demographics are important to your research question, but a lot of social questions and social and welfare questions are definitely indirectly, if not directly, related to demographics, specifically race and ethnicity, but age as well. For example, if you're studying, say, childhood obesity or homelessness, which are two very common themes in social welfare and social and welfare research, you would almost surely notice a difference between races or even ages when it comes to homelessness and um, childhood obesity. So you would probably want to collect that information to see if there is a difference between races or age and if the predictors of those uh, outcomes are unique to specific races as well. When you're asking about rate, uh, age, don't ask about their specific date of birth. That's a very, that's a very sensitive information and actually um, you're opening up a whole other can of worms if you collect sensitive information like specifically someone's date of birth. So instead of collecting their exact age, um, we recommend you actually collect data using categories. Um, for example, when you want to know about their age, you could create age categories that are broad. So if you're interviewing CSUMB students, and you ask them, what is your age? You could say 17 or younger, 18 to 25, 26 to 33, or 34 or older. Notice all the ages possible are here. They're all included. So this is a mutually exhaustive list. I'm sorry, it's a collectively exhaustive list. And it's mutually exclusive because no age falls in more than one category, right? So 34 is only found here, 32 it would only be found in this category, say 20 would only be found in this category, and 17 is only found in here. So it's both collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive. But that's a side note that I just wanted to use this as a learning tool. But what you could do is you'll find that, you know, if you're interviewing CSUMB students, they're mostly going to be found in this range here, right, 18 to 25, because it's a, it's a college campus. And while we do have an older, older student population, most of your students likely would be found in the 1825 range, not necessarily in the CHHS department, but in maybe around the campus. So what you could do, and we're not going to talk about it quite yet, but what you could do is consider expanding this age range from 18 to 25 to, say, 18 to 20, 21 to 23, 24 to 25. So I'm just making more categories to um, then be able to do more with more, more information. When asking about income, most people, believe it or not, actually don't know exactly how much they make per year. Exactly. Not, not necessarily them, but as a household, they may not know exactly how much they make. And even if they did know, the vast majority of people do not really want to discuss how much they make, really for obvious reasons, right? obvious privacy and, and, and anonymity uh, concerns. So again, much like the age, uh, we recommend using brackets or categories. And, um, you could create a category where it's say less than 30,000, 30,000 to 50,000, 51 to 75, and 76 to 100,000, something along those lines, where they're meaningful brackets and uh, meaningful categories in the brackets, but they're not so specific that someone's going to be sort of concerned about their privacy or even um, uh, sort of judgment or, or uh, something along those lines, they're um, wide enough that they're, they're not going to be uh, taking offense to too many um, uh, 
categories of questions. Questions about race and ethnicity, though, on the other, on the other hand, uh, speaking of taking to offense, um, it's a, it's a, it is a very complicated concept. I mean, race does not equal race, uh, ethnicity. Um, it is complicated, and, and unfortunately, while it's information that is often very vo uh, valuable and, and vital to understanding the, the, the social phenomenon we're trying to research, it's not easily answered. So the definition, the true definition that we, we, the best definition we can find on ethnicity and race is ethnicity is really about the learned cultural behavior celebrated throughout regions around the world. So it's more of a learned behavior, right? Whereas the race is the biological heritage. It is in the blood, literally in the blood in which you were, in, in which you were born. So regardless of where your, your location or your learned behavior. So in social sciences, most of the time, we care about ethnicity because it has to more to do about the behavior, the learned behaviors and your attitudes. In the biological sciences, they might be more concerned about the actual race. Um, several surveys actually end up combining race and ethnicity, but of course, with combining race and ethnicity, you're combining uh, a sort of a learned behavior and biologics into one, and of course, all the inherent problems with that. So white Hispanics or black Hispanics. These are um, difficult to understand. And, and, and even if you collect race and ethnicity separately, a lot of times you will see these categories combined eventually when the analysis comes. The census actually does collect information separately for ethnicity and race. But ultimately, these categories are m most of the time combined for analysis. So the minimum OMB categories for collecting data, and OMB is the Office of Management and oh, Office of Management and I'm not positive. It's the organization that runs the census. <laughs> um, it might be business. Office of Management and Business, I believe. And they run the census um, and, and they have categories uh, I'm sorry, definitions for race and ethnicity. And their minimum categories, uh, minimum categories are uh, for race is American Indian or Alaska Native, which is grouped together already. Asian, which encompasses multiple, multiple countries. Black or African American. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. And white. So you can already see a lot of problems with the race categories. But this is what we have. We have five categories of race, and if we wanted to make them extremely exclusive, we could make a hundred different categories of race. But it, it's, it just gets unwieldy. Um, the unique thing about the census and the OMB categories is that you can actually mark more than one race in order to create a mixed race. Um, you could combine American, Indian, and Asian, and that would be mixed. Or any combination of any two categories, then it, that person is considered mixed. The minimum ethnicity categories are simply Hispanic or Latino, or not Hispanic nor Latino. So those are ethnicity, at least for our purposes and census here in the United States. Questions that ask about, or items that ask about education, marital status, and family structure are, you know, a lot of times they, they can be, um, they can be, they can induce problems. They can introduce problems, for example, if you're asking somebody about their marital status and you ask the question, are you married? Or what is your marital status? And then you give the categories married, single, divorced, widowed, the problem with those categories, while they're all very reasonable responses, they are not necessarily interpreted the same by everybody else. So, for example, someone who's divorced might consider themselves single, or somebody who's widowed might consider themselves single, and yet single is also an option. So, you can see, you want to make sure that when you create categories for questions specifically about family structure or marital status, that they are very easily understood and that there is not a whole lot of ambiguity in responses. And other suggestions 
are, you know, when you're doing, when you're asking questions about demographics, like age or race or even income, you could group them all together, say at the beginning of a survey. And that's usually where you see them is the beginning of a survey. You ask them about their age, their, their race and ethnicity, and their gender. And a lot of times what you might see is actually a, a very a small introductory paragraph before the demographic information explaining what information you're trying to collect, why you're trying to collect it, and in ensuring the respondent that the information you're, that you're collecting will be anonymous and confidential. And then lastly, although I've never really seen this too often, it is a possibility and it makes sense, um, you could wait to ask the uh, demographic questions until the end of the survey. That way, once you've started to ask the questions that are more, uh, you've actually gained a trust with the respondent and that the respondent might be more likely to, um, to give you willingly information about his demographics and not have um, any sort of, um, there won't be any question about whether there's uh, privacy or confidentiality issues.